If you're managing Google Shopping ads and you run into this issue, invalid GTIN, and you're wondering what to do about that, I'm gonna help you in this video by showing you how to address invalid GTIN errors and then what to do if you just don't have a GTIN code. So we'll jump right in. I'll start with the GTIN help article in Google Merchant Center. You can find a help article on any attribute in Merchant Center by just Googling the name of the attribute followed by Google Merchant Center. And it will, almost always, you'll find the top search result will be the help article on that attribute. So GTIN is the one we're looking at today. And I'll just summarize what that is for you. So a GTIN is a global trade identification number. And what that is, is it's a UPC code or, or barcode, as we say, North America. There's the European and the Japanese versions, an EAN and a JAN, and then an ISBN number also functions as a GTIN code. Um, same thing for ITF 14, which I don't know what that is, but that works as a GTIN code. So you have to include one of these with your product data because it helps Google see that you're selling the same product as, say, another seller, and that way Google can line up your offer against other offers um, correctly because Google will know exactly which product you're selling based on that barcode or ISBN, whatever the GTIN code is. So for the first example that we'll go through is if you don't have a GTIN code, so store, brand, and private label products. So in this case, if you don't have a GTIN, then you don't necessarily have to buy one and add it to your product. So for example, if you're selling print-on-demand t-shirts or just some product for which you don't have or need a barcode because you're not selling it in physical retail. Um, you don't have to buy one. You can just add in its place the brand name and the MPN number. And those two pieces of information together act as a replacement for the GTIN code. Now this won't work if the product that you're selling does have a barcode somewhere out there on the market and you just don't happen to have access to that barcode. In that case, you should find the GTIN or the barcode for that product. And so a couple ways to do that, um, one would be just to ask the manufacturer, they should provide it to you. And then if you can't find it there, it's just a product, one or two products, and you don't wanna wait for the manufacturer to get back to you, you could search for it here. So let's just put in like Levi jeans, men's, uh, this is barcodelookup.com. Sometimes you'll be able to find your barcode here but this is obviously really labor intensive and doesn't work if you're doing this for more than a handful of products. So, um, but to summarize, if you don't have a GTIN code and there is no such thing as a barcode for your particular product, you can just skip that. So the way you would do that, um, let's take our sample product here. This is a demo shop. And so here you can see I have the brand Demo Beach Supplies and I've submitted the MPN number with it as well. So what you can do is, if you need to add those in, like let's say you're using a, a spreadsheet method, um, you don't have the GTIN code, you would just add the MPN here. So I'll just, as a example, I'll add in one, two, three, four, five as my MPN, and then demo beach shop as my brand. With those two pieces of information, that will stand in place of the GTIN unless Google knows that there is a GTIN number for your product, in, case, in, in which case that won't, this won't work because Google will flag it most likely. Then if you don't have a GTIN code, you can also fill out the identifier exists field as no, or you can just leave it blank. And if you want to check out this um, Merchant Center template, you can get that from the Merchant Center. Well, I'll, I'll actually show you right here. Um, you can go to data sources, add product data source, then use Google Sheets, and you can click use template to get that template. All right, so most of you are probably not using a template uh, like this or a Google Sheet. So what I'll share is next in, in is how to do that in a product data feed management tool. I use data feed watch, so I'll show you how to do that in here. This is our company's preferred feed management tool. We manage quite a few feeds. And uh, let's see, so I'm gonna jump into my channel. This is my Google Shopping channel. And all I'll do is I'll go down here to Identifier Exists. I'm gonna leave that empty. And then let's just pretend I haven't added the brand yet or the, MPIN, or the MPN. So I'm just gonna click Add Optional Field Brand. And then 
again, I'll search for MPN. I'll put both those in here for the brand. I already have that in my Shopify data. And then for the MPN, I'm going to actually take a, um, typically I'll take the UPC code or not the UPC. I'll take the MPN or the SKU if that available, if that information is available in the store. This time I do have a SKU. Let's see if we get any data here. Yeah, so I do have a SKU for some of these products, but for others I don't like that one. So let's just fix this up. So in the case that the SKU is blank, or I should say is not blank, rename it to SKU. So the rule works the same way it reads. So the MPN will be renamed to the SKU only if the SKU is not blank. If the SKU is blank, which will be all other cases, so I'll just do else. So if the above doesn't apply, I'll choose else, rename, and then I'll put a different number in here. A trick for this is if you don't have an MPN or a SKU number for your product, that's fine. You can assign the variant ID to that number or the variant ID number to that product. So in this case, that first one, the product called Austin Skateboard, there is no SKU in the Shopify backend data. And so I'll just submit the Shopify variant ID. And I'm using Shopify for this example, but if you're using BigCommerce or a different platform, you can really put in any number here. And so long as you put in some number for the MPN, then you're good to go. Although you should use a SKU or an actual MPN, but I don't have that for this. So I'm just gonna hit save. And now my MPN will be filled out. And what I'll do is once I've made that update in data feed watch, I'll come back and I'll wait for this to finish processing. So this will switch from processing to channel. Okay. Perfect. When it's done. And then I'll hit update here. And now because I'm using data feed watch and I can up tell data feed watch to update instantly, um, just like it has now when I refetch the feed right here, I will get the latest data right in my Google Merchant Center account. And now I already had the MPN and the brand in here to begin with, but this is just an example for you of what this would look like. So, all right. So that is how you can address this issue with GTINs. So just to recap, if you're missing the GTIN for a product that has a known barcode, then you should find that barcode and enter it into your Shopify store data. Um, or if you're on a different platform, enter it there or enter it via your feed tool. And then if you don't have a GTIN code or UPC at all for your product, then you can replace that GTIN field with the brand plus the MPN attributes combined, and then just select no for identifier exists or leave identifier exists blank. So all right, that's how you can deal with this problem. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel and like the video. We're a Data Feed Watch affiliate, so if you'd like to try Data Feed Watch, we'll get a kickback if you use the referral link in the description below, but what you'll get for that is a, a longer trial period of the program. So, all right, thanks for watching and happy advertising.